Hi, my name is Marissa and I'm going to be reviewing Boyfriend Dungeon for you today. Now I just wanted to note before we get started that I will be spoiling kind of whatever I want in this review. So if you're more interested in just getting some facts about the game, make sure you stop watching when you hit that spoiler warning. Otherwise, enjoy! Boyfriend Dungeon is a hack and slash dungeon crawler roguelike that's blended with a dating simulator. It was published by Kit Fox Games, and it's a little indie number that came out in August of 2021. At the time that this video was recorded, it was available on the Xbox Game Pass, but it's also been released for purchase for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and the PC. Boyfriend Dungeon follows the story of our main character, who can be personalized right down to the pronouns. It follows them on their summer vacation in Verona Beach. Verona Beach has this little monster problem in which dungeons or dunges have popped up around the city and they're causing some problems. Now that takes care of our hack and slash dungeon crawler roguelike aspects of this game, but now for the dating simulator part. As you progress through various dungeons in this game, you encounter weapons. These weapons are actually people who can transform into weapons just casually. And yes, they do in fact make up your dating pool in Verona Beach. The game features two dungeons and a final boss fight by the end. Each dungeon or dungeon has 12 floors and two bosses, a mini boss and a final boss. The enemies are based on the main character's fears, which are slowly revealed and then challenged over the course of your dungeon clearing career. While the goal at the start of the game is to clear out the dungeons and go on dates with your bay or bays, Things get weirder and weirder over the course of the summer. You know, weirder than dating your weapon. As you stave off unwanted advances, you prepare to fight off the big bad evil thing. And this is going to close out your summer vacation in a truly unique town. Overall, I gave this game 7 out of 10 stars, and I want to explain that in more detail. So. If you were just here for the rating, go play this game and come back and see if you agree with my thoughts. Otherwise, here's why I gave it a 7. Let's start with characters and romances. I said Boyfriend Dungeon is a dating sim, so let's not delay talking about those dates. There are 7 weapon companions who you uncover throughout the course of the game six of whom you can woo, date, and potentially hook up with. Two are cute enbies, three are men, and one is a woman. The non romanceable option is actually a cat, and the lack of romance there goes without speaking. Boyfriend Dungeon is partly a romance simulator though, so let's talk about those dates in a bit more detail. Meet Sunder, a broad-chested Talawar who is both fiery and flirty. As a person, he's into dancing, clubbing, and sending you eggplant emojis at 3am. Yeah, you know that guy. As a weapon, his form is a touch slow, but it has a useful bleed effect that drains enemies slowly of their health. It also stuns, which is useful in some of the more overpowering dungeons. Next up is Isaac. Isaac is actually the first sword you play with, but the second sword person you meet in the flesh. As a person, he's a suave gentleman who's well-spoken and got a little bit of daddy issues. As a sword, though, he's in a stock, which is also known as a thrusting sword. In combat, this means you've got pretty precise attacks and abilities that allow you to reflect, parry, and control the dunge, assuming you can handle them. Valeria is next. She is a fiery dagger who refuses to show you her true form at first. As a potential date, she's a bit secretive and defensive, making it a lovely surprise when she does actually open up to you. She is also a badass artist, which was just cool. As a weapon, she requires risk to do a vast amount of damage, but wow, can she do that damage. In combat, this means she works fast and up close, basically putting the rogue in roguelike. 
Seven is the next one. He is a laser saber and my boyfriend. I mean, one of my favorite weapons in the game. As a person, he's a K-pop band member and, well, dealing with some personal stuff. He's aloof and distant at first, but eventually warms up. As a weapon, he has a wide electric arc and a large area of attack, making him incredibly useful in a crowded dungeon. Next is Sawyer. Sawyer is a cute, non-binary glaive. As a person, Sawyer is an absolute cinema role who just needs a hand to hold as they learn about life. You know, things like eating regularly. As a weapon, they make slow but wide arcs with their attack that can be very powerful. They also have a ranged attack where you throw them and they'll return to you, and honestly, it's a nice touch. Next is Pocket. Pocket is a cat, actually, who transforms into brass knuckles. Yeah, yeah, a cat into brass knuckles. As a person, or rather a cat, Pocket is mischievous and constantly roaming the city and dragging you along for the ride. As a weapon, Pocket is quick and deadly, performing giant leaping attacks and dodging around enemies like your nine lives depend on it. Last, we have Rowan. Rowan is another non-binary weapon who transforms into a scythe in probably the best animation sequence in the entire game. As a person, Rowan is a bit dark, very mystical, and entirely witchy. They also have a familiar in the form of their aviary friend, Crowley, which was just really cute. As a weapon, they are powerful but slow. They move in wide arcs and have the ability to leave behind gravity wells that suck enemies in. Now, unlike some games which require you to commit to one fictional character over another, Boyfriend Dungeon embraces the polyamory. You can romance multiple people at once and it's all good to them. In my gameplay, I romance Seven, Rowan, Valeria, and Isaac. I intentionally got a little bit more romantically intertwined with Sunder than I meant to, but I did outright turn down Sawyer, opting to be their friend instead. Something about them personally just felt a little bit too young and naive, and the game does not actually punish you for not choosing a romantic relationship. I did have a bit of a problem with how quickly the romances progressed. I liked the idea that I didn't have to choose between multiple partners, but it would have been nice to have an opt-out option at every stage of the romance. As a dating sim, this felt like a huge overlook, especially when mixed with the fact that I didn't really get that much time to get to know them. I felt like I was forced to choose before I knew I was choosing. I would have liked a little bit more nuance and space to make that choice. However, I do think all the characters are fabulous. So, it's too bad I romanced Sunder and didn't mean to, but also, it's okay. Now let's talk about leveling up and getting down. So, all that being said, the variety of characters and their connection to their blade forms felt really fun and refreshing. You actually level up your weapons by going on dates with them, whether that's platonic dates or romantic ones and it was really fun. <laughs> After taking a specific weapon into the dungeon, you were asked out by that person. As I said, it could be platonic if you made that clear enough in the start, which was something I did with Sawyer. However, lots of the romantic ones were quite fun too, and there's lots of option there. Each weapon has its own skill tree as well that you unlock as you progress the platonic or romantic relationship. Certain skills are unlocked and then immediately added, while others allow you to choose between one skill or another. You can also gift presents to your weapon to increase your friendship or relationship with them. And then we have choice and customization. So obviously it's a dating sim, which means you have choices over who to date and whatnot. However, I really appreciated all the small choices that the game allowed you to make as well. This started with our character customization screen, which was available throughout the entirety of the game. At any point in time, you could go back and change everything, including your name, your pronouns, your eyes, your hairstyle and color, and your skin color. As you progress through the story, you also unlock different outfits and hats. 
some of which did have specific advantages like adding an extra life or an extra bubble tea, which is your health, of course. While the customization is fun and fun it was, I did change my outfit all the time and definitely fought off baddies in kidney ears, which was super fun. The choice wasn't always awesome. As I alluded to earlier, some of the choices didn't feel like much of a choice, and I did feel like I was corralled into certain relationships. Now let's talk about the graphics and artwork really quickly. I've already mentioned that the animations for the weapon transformations were my favorite part of the game, but the artwork throughout just felt really cute and fresh. The cartoon style worked perfectly for its purpose and honestly was just really clean. Next up, gameplay and mechanics. The overall feel of this game was nice and smooth, but it wasn't overly polished. The fighting took about a minute to get used to and it felt a little bit less smooth when compared to other games that have similar fighting styles like Hades for example. However, once I got used to it, it felt fine and I was able to get what I needed done done. It played like an average roguelike and I was pretty hooked on it by the end. I particularly enjoyed the mechanic of the foam which was a nice touch to add content. I really liked getting texts from people and having that add to their storylines as much as seeing them on dates or fighting with them in dungeons. I will say it did give me a bit of personal anxiety that I couldn't always answer their texts. Next up, content and repetition. I kept picking up this game for a few reasons. Part of it was the desire to finish each of the storylines, but I also just really liked the dungeon crawling with my sword slash companion. That being said, one of the biggest complaints I have is that there are really only two dungeons in the game and a relatively small final battle. I desperately wanted another dungeon to explore and another fear to conquer. Though the majority of this game did play very smoothly, I did keep getting a glitch where part of my recipe wouldn't show up when I went to go craft something. It really only blocked out the name, so it wasn't anything game breaking, just a little bit annoying. At another point I did have to restart the game because I got stuck, but that seemed to be kind of a one-off thing. And now for my final thoughts. Overall, I found Boyfriend Dungeon to be an addicting game with fantastic gameplay, good characters, and a unique plot. My biggest complaints are the lack of additional content and the rushed feeling of being pushed through each of the romances rather than choosing one. Overall, it's a game I'd recommend if you love dating sims and roguelikes and wish they could be one game. If you're looking for a game similar to Hades but much shorter, this could quench your thirst as well. I enjoyed playing this game and I didn't want to put it down, which is why I'm so upset that there's not more content, although apparently there is more to come. If you're interested in seeing my full playthrough that's posted to our channel, I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this game. You can rest assured we'll have more reviews like this in the future. And until next time, I've got to go daydream about Seven and Rowan. So I'll be catching you in the next one. Bye, everyone.